bring them in. <laughs> bring them in, ladies and gentlemen. We are here on the Brilliantly Dumb Show. Don't, 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 <laughs> give, a, don't give a salute, Joe. <laughs> don't give a salute 20 minutes late out of the gate. And I, I Joe, do yourself a favor too. I don't want to hear any excuses. I don't want to hear them because I will fire back at you so quick. Don't don't just just say my bad, boys. My bad. Wow. No, my bad. We waited till eight o'clock to film. Joseph, that's not the argument you were. I was hoping that you were going to counter with a solid argument, Joey D. That's not. That's not the yeah, route. Joe. Forty-five minutes late out of the game. Uh, forty-five I'm minutes late. Minutes forty-five minutes late. I walk. It's it's I it's, it's forty-five minutes. It's very tardy, Joey D. It's it very tardy. Thirteen minutes. My 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 laptop was fucking dead. Mikey V, how do you feel about that? <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, what are we talking about here? We well, we, I think it needs to be. I think oh, it I mean, ten minutes shorter. Eight twenty at eight twenty. All right, all right. Let's five. You let's start. I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm going to put it behind me. Let's start the show. That, I think that's very show. good. I think, let's fellas. Go. Hey, hey. Love you, Joe. Can we clap it up? I, I love you too. I love everybody. We're happy to be here. We're happy to be. Here. Who's happier than Joey D to be here tonight? Wow, wow, wow. I'm a happy camper. I'm going to leave it at that. 20 minutes go. is wild, Joey D. 20 we just, <laughs> well, we just walked back. I don't understand though. We just walked back into the hotel. I said to my guy, I said, I don't understand. We just we just got back in back from the hotel. By the way, good Mexican food tonight. Hmm. That's a positive, right? What'd you go? A lot with? of positives today. A lot of positives. I went with the fajitas. Joe tried to talk me into the um steak and shrimp burrito, which probably mm. would have been a good play. Mm. Um, surf and turf is a Mikey V. That's a that's a that's a state burritos in general. But I tell you, burritos I could take down a burrito and like if I'm hungry, I could take down a burrito at an alarming pace, like an alarming pace, like one of those cartoons with the chipmunks when they eat the. Do corn you like the, the wet burrito or do you like just like the the standard? The what burrito? Like a wet burrito. Do you like like a more wet burrito or do you like just standard? Uh, I like if it's got, you know, I, I think a standard has to have, I like beans in there, rice, and then whatever your main fare is with, with your with your meat. If you're going pulled pork or you're going chorizo or you're going, you know, you know what, what um, chicken or carne asada or something like that. You know what's very upsetting to me are the Mexican restaurants that don't have – I almost think every single dish at a Mexican restaurant, outside of the burrito because it should be loaded into the burrito, every dish has got to come with rice and beans. To see somebody order rice and beans on the side I think is a shame. I, 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 I think it's a, You know what I mean? Am I wrong there, Joey D? No, I don't think you are. I think that red beans and rice is – so You like steak. pinto? Pinto bean? Yeah. Yeah, pinto bean is yeah, good. Yeah, pinto I like pinto is. bean. Mikey, Bob, give me a when quick you go favor. to Chipotle, sure. do you do the 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 black beans or do you do the pinto beans? It's a great question. I actually was going to ask Mikey to build a burrito, um, uh, build a burrito <laughs> for me from from Chipotle. I go with the black I can't beans. Do I'm, that. A, I'm a I'm a pinto bean guy. Why can't you build a burrito for me? I don't I don't go to Chipotle. Why really not? Often. You go to uh, Cadobo. We don't we don't have one close. Yeah, I have a Cadobo close. Yeah. Okay. But okay. Cadobo, I like doing the bowl. I like the bowls because you know I just feel I... like you're getting more bang for your buck with the bowl. But they still ask you with the bowls if you want, you know, the black or brown beans. The pinto or the black, right? I, yeah, I, yeah, like, yeah. I, I like, I think black bean is so like commonly used that I like to switch it up with the pinto. I think the pinto is a nice. I brown. do too. I like the brown Joe, beans. Joe, I think they're know, better. You know what bothers me is um, me and Mikey have this thing where anytime we have a meal, like any meal, we'll just send the picture of the meal to each other. No words uh, on it. Nothing. No. We just send the picture of the meal. This guy buries me on what he's eating compared to me. And it, it's I think a little bit of it is just the choice. The selections that I'm making are so off, but also, too, it's that it's New cow, Jersey bro. thing, yeah. man. It really, yeah. really I, is. I will say the omelet picture you sent me the other day. That that was a nice looking breakfast. You know where that omelet's from, Joey D? It's from Astro Burger, believe it or not. Yeah, that you've been good going there omelet. low key. Nice and, little and, spread. Yeah. You know, I do think Mikey V, it's like the only like like sometimes he'll 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 hit that flex on us, like with the chicken part, like the chicken fried sandwiches and stuff. Cause he's like actually at work working hard and it's like his one like thing that he has like that serenity yeah, that we can't that's have a, that's a great word choice yeah, too. That's great. and it's it's like a little bit of a it's it's a little bit of a game changer like it yes. evens up the playing field a little bit and you know what god love him he deserves it the guy's working his ass off while we're sitting there doing whatever and, and it's a flex that we can't compare to i just don't think we have the food like 
in terms of like Italian food and the different op options that he has that we don't have where we're at geographically, it's a shame, but it is, it is absolutely the playing field is absolutely in Mikey V's favor. You know what he does too is when he does the pizza nights with Holly when the kids oh. go to bed Friday <laughs> night and he does that's you know the salad and the yeah. pizza. It's it's special, man. It's very, very you know what special. my favorite Mikey V spread photos are though. I mean the the ultimate you got the spread photos from I mean the Holly V spreads, but the ultimate No, not the Holly V, not the Holly V, but Ray, like, it gotta be Rayo, the Rayo's night. No, no, no. I'm just saying in general, where he takes pictures of like what he's eating. You know what my favorite is? And what? like he sent it to us a few times, and it's just the way that he lays it out. It's just the best. What it, is it? His Chinese food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That only yeah. happens. Yeah. That only happens it's like, like twice he's a year. Preparing so. a banquet. He just yeah. he had yeah, everything that's... like layered, and it looks Special, like man. <laughs> I, I love me some Chinese, man. I really do. All I right, really boys. Do. Um, he got Bob when he won that bet off of you. He went to town. <laughs> speaking, <laughs> had to bang speak, Bob a little bit on that one. Speaking of oh, uh, special, geez. by the way, um, big announcement, boys. Um, the fellas have surpassed. First off, we've made it to the charts, which is something that that we put on the New Year's resolution that we wanted to do to make it to the charts. Um, we have surpassed our highest downloaded episode um that we have ever had and i this show put it hands together because i got news for you fellas this show is hotter than ever and it's to the fine folks that are listening weekly um and i think we're seeing it more and more that people are relying on the braille and the dumb show and mikey v had a few words that he would like to share he doesn't have a few words that he'd like to share but mikey v always has some words that he can talk about <laughs> the so, with that being said mikey v if you could please um just say everything that you wanted to say um, in regards to the Brilliantly Dumb Show topping the charts here. Well, you know, here's the thing about the Brilliantly Dumb Show is, you know, you, we, you know, we have we have our own content, right? And everyone is, you know, everyone is so religiously following the boys in general, Perez and and Cuts and the Jet and and Ticket and Bob and myself, and the level of support across all pages, across all platforms, across all individual content and then to kind of focus in on this show which let's be honest we grind on this show this is not a, this is not this is not um this is not vip velvet rope this is hardcore banter with the boys this is not for the faint at heart and the fact that people just keep showing up week after week it's just a testament i think it's it's actually it's like a microcosm of how we deal with this show this is this is our grind this is our baby and and we take care of our baby and our baby's got to grow you know we can't keep it as an as a newborn infant the whole time as much as i would like to this this baby's got to grow into a full grown you know adult and that's what we're, we're nurturing this show to get bigger and bigger and bigger and better for everybody out there and we're going to continue to do that and and damn it don't try and stop us there's something special in the air fellas so folks if you could do us a favor like comment subscribe and then if you're listening at some point if you're driving wait till you're parked whatever it may be but we want to keep the charts we want to keep moving up those charts if you could do when you get off of it mikey v it's all yours no no go go ahead five star comment in the apple app we gotta keep our way churning and burning um thank you guys please five star comment we want to keep it up the rankings there i will say being above the sebastian maniscalco show on the charts i know it's not ideal of where we want to be but seeing us above uh sebastian was pretty fucking cool yeah it was Pretty well, fucking cool. Fans, I mean, it, it also helps when we're now in the comedy genre and no longer in like science. Yes, that is exactly computer. right. That's, that's I mean, true. like, that what is, are we doing? We were fucking, bad. we were literally trying to fucking wade that's through bad. quicksand. Shovel I mean, shit it, against the tide for Amazing. We get T-Bone puts us into the right fucking -bone, clap it category. Up. God love T-Bone. No offense, Bob. But like, now all of a sudden we're starting to see the fruits of our labor. And it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, it, 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 you know. And the fact I that imagine look, if we were in comedy a year ago, Bear Down, we'd be, be cracking the top twenty. You might could be, be up there with Rogan. Well, let's <laughs> just take it easy over here, okay? Let's just go ahead and just take it easy now, over there, Bob. I got two things that I want to get into very, sure. very quickly. Very sure. quickly. The first thing I have to do a shout out. We had Ryan Clark on the show a couple of weeks ago. Everybody remembers that when we had Clark on the yes. show. The way that manifested was obviously through Twitter, but all those tweet exchanges back and forth with Clark, there was this kid 
This guy, Anthony Pasillo, who is a, a, a diehard member of the faithful and the voiceless. And he facilitated a contact with Clark's representative, this girl who's who represents Ryan Clark for his podcast, The Pivot. Now, from what I understand, Anthony was expecting a shout out on the Ryan Clark episode or the episode directly, uh, you know, following that. He didn't get it. I've heard he's lost a lot of sleep over it. I've heard he's very upset about it, like borderline, like, yeah, I guess I'll still watch the show, but these guys were my boys. You know, I'm very, very upset about it. So I want to give a special shout out to Anthony Pasillo for hooking that up. That that was a big moment. He's getting engaged also. His cousin told me, congratulations, Anthony. We appreciate you. And uh, thanks for facilitating that. And now you can get some good sleep. But that was number one. I just had to get that out there, Bob. Good, good on you, Mikey V. And Anthony, number, number two, you. I think we should address UFC night with Bob. Because I just want to jump right in and say one thing. John Jones, I am ready to put in the category of a different type of athlete. And you saw him in person, Bob. This guy, and now Gain is a good fighter. This guy he fought is not some like bum that he they just threw in there after this guy hasn't fought in three years. Not only am I saying John Jones is the GOAT, I'm saying John Jones, in my opinion, is in the stratosphere of his sport to which Jordan was in in basketball, to which Gretzky is in in hockey, to which Brady is in in football. I think John Jones is the apex of UFC fighting. I The guy dismantled this guy inside of 40 seconds. And you yeah. were there in person. So give me the breakdown. Yeah, I, I was saying to Joe, first off, you know, to piggyback off what you said, which people don't get, John Jones has fought the best fighters in every single fight that he's had. He's never shied away from anybody. He's had the belt and he's fought the best of the best of the best. I, I'll get into our buy and sell segment because I was going to buy oh. the UFC. Oh, that's it, fair. It, not, it yeah. is, bar none, the most fun event I have ever been. Like, it is not even close compared to all the other events that I've been to of how much fun the UFC is. It, it, it is a blast. The only thing that was a shame with the John Jones fight is at the end, um, you know, last fight of the night, there's all this build up to the fight. Yeah, is him. It was so short. He I mean, him. within two he minutes. Dismiss- he, I could, even now, I have bet Jones. Um, I put Jones out as a pick, but I didn't think he was going to do that to him. I didn't think he was going to just totally Mikey, dismantle uh, the guy. Who I was? would love to go with you guys to a UFC fight. It, it is we'll it there. is one of, and, and shout out a guy that I met through Joe. He's a big fan of the show, Rocky, who got me out there. One of the, it's such a hard ticket to get. It is so much fun. And my dad has been a huge UFC fan for years, and I never even knew it. He kind of like he just never spoke about it till I kind of like came in, and he's watching fight after fight after fight, and it came out of nowhere. So I wanted to get into the UFC so that I could enjoy that with him because he was so into it. So I started following different fights and stuff like that to take my dad to that event was the coolest thing. We had a connection through the UFC. They took us down to the octagon, like. He was in all his glory. It, it it was the most fun event. Everybody's got to go to one of these at some point. It, it's unlike anything that I've ever been to. And again, me, who I don't know a ton of UFC, um, you know, and a ton of fighters, you learn about them, you know, as you go. But it, it's, it is such an unbelievable experience. You bet the card and you go to one of these things. It's unbelievable by the UFC. And yes, John Jones, the guy is a freak, and I bet against him. So, and, that's jo- awesome. and the only other thing <laughs> I, I, I have to bring up, I have to bring it up, and I want Joe to weigh in on it. Um, Joe, would you say out of the three of us that you are the most? And I, I'm, I'm hoping you're going to say yeah. Would you say you are the most fashion conscious individual of the three of us? Would you say that? Yeah, I think I think you have good fashion sense, but yeah, I I try to keep my. Bob, would you sense. agree with that? Yeah, well, yeah, I would. I I don't think you're I far off. Say Mikey. something now. Bob is at the event of a lifetime. The event oh. of a lifetime. I mean, people would give people would give their left arm to go to this event. Some people. Oh, he's gonna body for him to Jets wear jacket. a Jets leather jacket, <laughs> a New York Jets leather jacket. I I'm not gonna say that it was a bad play. But I'm not going to say it was a good play. I just think it was so oh. fascinating. When I saw the Jets leather jacket, Bob, I was like, at first I thought it was just a leather jacket. Then I saw it had the Jets green and the Jets look on it. And I said, all Bob does is talk about how miserable he is with the Jets. So it's either a really good play, good on you for being, uh, you know, a representative for your team in, in Vegas of all places. 
But at the same time, I was also slightly baffled by that play. Bob, we got have to say we got to get a picture from T Bone of Bob in the octagon with the, the Jets. Oh, <laughs> the, with the, with the <laughs> fist pose. Yeah. You have to do the fist pose. But that was great. That picture. That picture. Like, listen, that's that's such a priceless picture with your dad, oh. bro. Like, that's that's a frame job. Automatic oh, has God. to be. But the Jets jacket, bro, just like. Brought me back to to seeing people in leather team jackets. Now that may be a style. I don't know. I'm not really up on style too much. I just throw row back on because I know it'll always look good. But you the know, Jets jacket. It was it was like a um like a bullpen coach for the Yankees wears the Yankees jacket. You know what I mean? It, <laughs> yeah. It, 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 look, here's the deal. I'll be the first to tell you. I got no swag. I I, I really don't. I I have no. My fashion is is so bad and and. I thought it was cool. I thought it was cool. All right. That's fair. I, I, That's fair. To his credit, I will say this. I was in Vegas the week before. It's cold as shit right there, right over in Vegas right now. Like it the was desert cool. at night. That's cold. So when I saw him wearing the jacket, the reason I thought he was wearing it was because it was super cold. Mind you, he was indoors for the fight. You swear he was out, you know, in the fucking, you know, in in the Upper East Side where it's snowing and shit. Like it was, it was, it was a bit much, but it. it I don't know, Bob. I will make you this proposition. If you want, I will take you shopping. And I well, no, we won't go nuts with we won't I mean, go nuts with like I, mean, I will I will I will I will go and I will help hand pick some stuff out for you. Yes. Is that the end of the proposition? Yeah, that's well, about yeah, it. No, I'm just saying <laughs> I'm, I'm your credit card, card Bob, like, but but he will take you, yes. <laughs> I'm okay. not trying to say yeah. I'm Rico Small, yeah. but I'm just saying yeah. like I think I could help Bob pick up some things because Bob, you got good stature, you got a good physique. Like you could you could fill out some good like I bet you I could pick out some things you'd look like. I believe it. Fucking, like, I, 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 believe. I think the Do plainer you know? the clothing Bob wears, the more like neutral color, just straight. Like when Bob just wear Bob can carry a plain crew neck t-shirt with the chain out very well. He could you just start rock wearing that the very well. lemon. Like the Lululemon hoodies and stuff, and he looks fantastic in them. I don't know why you deviate away from something like that. To it's the just leather, to the leather Jets leather. jacket. That's was, amazing to that me because you know wild. what? Look, it was I, like he was wearing. You know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of Putty's eight ball uh, jacket uh, that he wears. I can't get out of it. I, I can't. I can't get out of the segment. I, I know exactly that jacket. I you're can't about. move on. I just can't. Oh, I can't move on. Hey, high five. I can't, I can't move on. I, I thought it, yeah, I thought it was cool. I, I, I really did. I thought it was cool. I, I mean, I, I, I think it ends up maybe being cool, though. I'm just saying, like, it may yeah. be cool in the eyes of many. Yeah, it might be so out like there that it is actually cool. You yeah. know, I did I did say to my dad, though, I said, because him with, like, traffic, even though we're staying at a hotel across the street, right. he starts to panic about traffic and all. <laughs> I said, Dad, they're offering us to go to the Octagon. We have to get that picture together. Like, we're going to be so happy that we got that picture together. So you together. had to wait to get that picture? Like, was there, like, a long they, line? There was. They took us right through it. Oh, which that's was awesome. really cool to that's where awesome. they, it was Good. It was right up. You don't, make, you don't make a man like your dad would. Like, you don't make him wait. Like if you see it's younger people, like it you don't was, you don't make him wait. You know what I'm but, saying? But you not know to, what that's he, not calling him old. That's just out of respect. If he, I saw a line of young people, I'd move him to the front. I don't know you, who he is. You know what he wanted say, to do. So like you got to do the classic, like you know, with your fists up. He wanted to do me in a submission hold. I said, oh, Dad, how, we're how. not getting down. <laughs> We're not getting down to the floor and doing a submit. Put what, Bob in a triangle hole. Yeah, yeah. What, what are you doing? Oh. A full Nelson on the. What are we doing? That was, that, I tell you what, I, I, I would have funny. I would have paid money to see him trip over his shoelaces. Oh. He tripped on his shoelace going out of the octagon. It, it was one of the I'm funniest glad he didn't things. Get hurt. It was it was one of the funny. He'll never hear the end of that because he yeah. he's such not oh. a fighter. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, like he comes up and he just trips over his shoe. It was unbelievable. <laughs> That's true. And there's like blood all over the mat from the fighters previously. Yeah. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And then yeah, here he is just it. tripping over his shoe. <laughs> it was sensational. Um, there's okay. nothing truly funny about watching somebody trip over their shoelace. There is. It's there is. Nothing I love more than trips. a fall. I love a fall more than anything in the world. Can we play the clip? And sorry to do it to you, Joey D. Can we play the clip? I actually asked Joe. <laughs> It, it is. We were talking about how good falls are after that happened with my the medicine said, ball fall. The medicine ball fall is amazing, but yeah, that's a Putsy sent recently 
of him going down at the peninsula. That to uh, me is is the funniest I, thing. I've that, that, down, seen this. I'm sure. I don't think I've seen it. Oh, you've seen it? you've seen it. Oh, in the no, restaurant? No, no in, in near the elevator. In on the security camera, right? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tremendous, <laughs> tremendous. Yeah, that's that's tremendous. Yeah. It re oh, it's so good. I thought I oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Oh, we'll play it over. This is Joey D, and I I begged for the security footage in the peninsula of running to catch a service elevator, and just. Wiping out. <laughs> oh, man. Not I tell you what. I mean, what? It's so right on his he, back too. And he gets right up and back. he tries to blame the bus boy. Points the, right to the floor. How dare this? How dare this? There was beer this that had spilled out of the garbage that the <laughs> was supposed to clean up. You got to watch the YouTube. You have to watch it. It's so good. All right, folks. Big announcement. The Braille and the Dumb Show has partnered with the fine folks over at DraftKings. College basketball season is here and better than ever right now. New customers who download the DraftKings app, go ahead and plug in promo code Brilliantly Dumb. When you put $5 on a pregame money line, and if that bet hits, you went up to $150 in bonus bets. You can't go wrong when you go DraftKings. Again, that's going to be promo code Brilliantly Dumb. Bet $5 on any basketball game, and come join the madness today. The Brilliantly Dumb Show, DraftKings Live. It's so good. Okay, fellas, let's keep it moving here. Joey D, buy or sell? No, I'm selling. Um, I don't know why we continue to – I just don't know. The NFL, man, it's uh -oh. like today we see Derek Carr and Geno Smith get paid out like a king's ransom. And I just don't understand, like, at what point – our NFL franchise is going to realize that they are overpaying for a commodity that they don't need to overpay for. Why are we doing this? And I've listed some of the guys in the last. So Geno Smith this year, three years, 105 million. Derek Carr, four years, 150 million. And then you just look. 100 million in guarantees for Carr. Yeah, and, 100 and then million some guarantees. Of these other guys, how they panned out. Ryan Tannehill, Jimmy Garoppolo. Jared Goff. I mean, at what point do we need to see these guys? And I'm not trying to take money away from anybody. Good for them. They're getting paid out. But as a franchise, you're you're paying these guys. And it's like, for what? They had one good year. Like Geno Smith, no offense. I love the guy. Congrats. He had one good season. And by the way, at the end of the season, he looked miserable. He looked terrible. Yeah. And it's like he's got $105 million now coming back to him. And it's like, why would I mean our NFL branches are their heads in the desperate, sand? Desperate for that position. I, I don't I, get it. It's like I pick up from the draft. How many good quarterbacks are coming up in the draft? You have a rookie. Three, three really promising ones, in my opinion. I don't think Levis Hurts. is going to be good. Jalen Hurts on a rookie call. I mean, like, I mean, why pay a guy that much when you can build? off of a, a, a prospect or get somebody and just not pay them that much. I, I, I like to take a lot and I agree with it. I'm a big advocate for this too. Mikey V I'm curious for your thoughts. Um, I mean, listen, I said some things last season about certain players that I thought, uh, <laughs> listen, it's, it's the market. I think the market is just okay. demanding. Like when you look at the franchise tag prices, the options are either you go into quarterback purgatory potentially um, or you just bite the bullet and you hope things work out with these guys. Now, listen, Derek Carr is a good NFL quarterback. He's he's good. He's average. I would say he's above uh, average to good. I, no, 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 Joe. But I'm just saying these are the type of Daniel Jones. Daniel yeah. Jones wants forty five million. He's gonna he's gonna get a bag, and, and the Giants and may give it to him. I mean, I don't know if they're gonna give him forty five, but they're gonna give him a lot. But you know, personally for me, Derek Carr, I wouldn't give the guy a bus ticket after he missed the prize picks over rushing total. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's me personally on Derek Carr. So good luck to Derek Carr. I think that uh, and Bob. Now I think your Jets, your Jets. It's it's Garoppolo or Rogers, Garoppolo or Rogers. And I mean, you couldn't have a bigger gap between two guys than Garoppolo oh. or Rogers, but 
if you land Rodgers, man, it's going to be sh- sure it's going to be interesting. But I, I thought part like of the Jets made too. sense to me. But I, I always I like Rodgers if you pay for. Here's the thing. He's done it before. So at yes. least I get yes. at least I get no, it. Rodgers, like, Rodgers is an MVP quarterback. I mean, there's no there's for a guy who right. has the repertoire of being a winner. So yes. at least it's like, you know what? Maybe it doesn't pan out. But we went for a guy who's a proven a weirdo freak, but a winner. Yes. Hall of Fame quarterback. And I can understand that. But when you pay a guy like Geno Smith, who couldn't even stay in the league aside from being a backup, has one year where he plays well for three quarters of the season, and you commit to him for three years at $105 million, it yep. just doesn't make sense to me. Yep. I yeah, I, I I totally agree. I always feel like if you can't win a Super Bowl with the quarterback, which I'm sorry, Derek Carr, but you're not going to win a Super Bowl with Derek Carr, do not pay him. Classic example in another league, a team that, that keeps doing, like, uh, to me, a perfect example, like in a whole other league, basketball, NBA, the Blazers, they re-signed Damian uh, Lillard for hundreds of millions of dollars, which don't get me wrong, he's a stud. But they have a super max deal? A crazy oh, no. deal. Yeah, you don't have the team around them. So yeah, you're yeah, not, yeah, not going to yeah. be able to to win a championship. If, you, if you're not going to be able to win a championship, the time don't pay the money. And maybe Lillard's not a great example because Lillard actually is a stud. Yeah, but like stud. Daniel Jones, they're going to give Daniel Jones his money. And I'm sorry, I don't think you're winning a Super Bowl with Daniel Jones. I, I mean, you just, right. I mean, are you it really going to win? It too with the quarterback position. You don't see this happening with any, I mean, there are some wide receivers and running backs. Oh, those. Mikey knows. Mikey, uh, Mikey no, V I'm knows of a wide up, receiver. I'm saying, what Real I'm saying, well. Love Christian Kirk. Good guy. <laughs> with the QB position time and time and time again to the point where, you know, you know it doesn't happen with other positions. It's just the quarterback because – these guys want to believe they have the guy, and it's like it's so clearly that it's not the guy for I, that kind of money. I like it's, to take Joey D. I got I got yeah, no issue with the buy. I don't think Bear Down has any issue with no, the buy. And no, no, folks, no, 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 let's no. just hope and pray that Mikey V has a sell on the board for us this week. But go ahead, Mikey V. Yeah, I do have a sell, and it's a weird one. But I I I, I brought it up uh, last week, not on the pod, but I, I I brought it up. I wanted to talk about it. You know, ever since we came out of this pandemic, um, a lot of people now when they greet you, I've noticed, go for the fist bump as like, like, that's like a proper way to greet somebody. And I got to tell you, it's so awkward, the exchange, because I refuse to, I refuse to bend to that. I'm a handshake guy or, or like a dap guy. Is it a dap or a dab? Is it a a dap? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a dap guy or a handshake guy, open palm greeting of any sorts. I'm selling the fist bump today. I think enough is enough already with the fist bump. I mean, we're not on the court. I didn't just make a three-point shot and we're running back down the other end. I'm just giving you a quick one. I I, I understand there's times for the fist bump, but for that to be your go-to greeting when you first meet somebody is a fist bump. And meanwhile, it's so awkward because – they give me the fist and I, I refuse yes. to go. So I kind of just wrap their, I wrap the fist <laughs> with my hand and I do like a modified air shake. It kind of looks like I'm stirring up a big pot of gravy or something. But so, I'm selling, I'm selling the fist bump. I think it's being overused and it's being used because I don't know why, but it's like nobody wants to shake hands or do open palm greeting anymore. And that's uh, to me, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, contort my lifestyle to that. That's so, not right. so. The only thing I will say with the with the fist bump, the only thing that I will counter with, initial greeting, no. I don't think you should ever do a fist bump no. on the initial greeting. No. With that being said, what I do like about the fist bump is you're in and you're out. There's no confusion. A lot of times when you go up with the dap up, you can come in clean, and then you got to figure, okay, are we now going around? You don't have and to then, give the hug. What about the quick, like, the A lot of people the do the hug, though, and you, you, the... you have to make those decisions when you do do the dab to where even when you do hug, then when you break, some people close it like this to where yeah, they make a lot. Some in. people bring the shoulder in. That's exactly right. It happened today on the course. I had a terrible one where I went for the round, brought it. He went to lock it in. I did like that. That's what's good about the fist pump is there's no confusion about the fist pump. It's just boom. You're just you're in and you're out. Initial <laughs> greeting. I, but you know what I mean, Mikey? It's like it's if impersonal. you do the dap up, there's so many different. Things I get it. There's variations. I get it. Right. But that's what makes life beautiful is the unpredictability of it. 
you know, that's and, why we and, got Joey D on the show. There's nobody right. more unpredictable I'm, than Joey D. Unpredictability. I mean, uh, you know, I, I'm just I'm tired of the fist bump. You're that's an old school gentleman, and you handshake and don't ever change. That's that's the beauty of you, Mikey. And it doesn't have to be like a formal, like stiff ass, like hello, how are you? Like, you know, I could, I could, I could definitely add flavor to it. I mean, there's no question about that, but everybody's going for fist bumps and I just look like an insane person. Cause I'm just going like this. Yeah, thing, it looks crazy. Tough look. Joe, it is a tough you, look. It's certainly you, a tough look, but I'm not fucking changing. Have Joe. you ever, have you ever gone to do like the handshake? The young guy goes to the fist bump and then you switch and then you, you miss it. No, I won't oh. switch. I won't switch. I won't. I switch. had that once and it was awkward. I literally kidding. will shake your fist. I will. If that's what it's going to take, I'll shake your fist and you could think it's awkward, but this is, I'm not going to, I'm not going to conform. On that, on that could, ground, I will not. Could you imagine the young lad that comes over to Bear Down's house to take G-Baby on the date? <laughs> when that time comes, you know, years and years down the road. Oh, my God. I can't think God of a harder. Imagine he tries to fist bump me. I'll fucking oh, fall right out of the house. God, <laughs> he'll be, I'm so, sorry, Gab. You got to go back. I'm sorry. The date oh, ain't Oh, man. That oh, you this, talk better about. not come empty yeah, handed. When that happens. You better oh, not come empty-handed either. That is a tough don't position. Don't come dude. empty handed. No, don't. No, no, don't. <laughs> what do you mean don't come empty-handed? Like he you better, a you better have something oil. in the house. See, that's my problem. That's my problem. I got to be better with that, man. When I was at your house, Mikey, yeah. and you had, and I came to your house, and then Smigsy came over, brings a bottle of wine. Grill guy comes we over. Stopped at the brings liquor 30... you, brought, you brought stuff from the liquor store, didn't you? Sure didn't. Oh, was sure that the didn't. first time? Because I Didn't... I distinctly remember the second time we stopped at a, one of those times we stopped at a liquor store right. That after was for the Nikki Diamond. So I'm not I'm not good okay. with that. Okay. I'm, I, I'm not I'm not well, good with that. I, that is Smigsy. Smigsy may yeah, be Smigsy's too good school, with that. Yeah. Smigsy we went will get to in. a restaurant, Mikey V, and he brought the Maitre D. He brought her. Yeah, what was it? Olive oil. You know, not for nothing. Not for nothing. There's and... there's taking it a little bit too far. Also, I think Smigsy now you're making... might take. He takes yeah. a little too. He makes everybody look insane. I was like, Smigs, are you going for dinner? Or are you trying to take her out because you're with your girlfriend? <laughs> it, it's 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 man Smigsy. Yeah, he really, really is. Um, all right, boys, we're gonna keep it moving along here. Um, Bobby Blockbusters. No, wow. well, we got to talk about this, Bob. Uh oh. I, we we Bob and I discussed something that we had to bring up, and I don't want to. I don't want to sidestep. And Mikey V, this can be a little. A little, little nervy thing. You might take offense to it, but, but we have to bring this up, okay? And and I, <laughs> it's not a pretzel job. This is not a pretzel job. Sure. When you when preface you, with it's not a pretzel concerned. job, odds are it's a Rolls Gold bag of pretzels. But it's ahead. it's it's a, a legitimate concern of of ours. And by the way, I don't even know much about this because I don't have this platform. Twitter. But your uh, uh, Twitter use apparently uh, is. Uh, and I, I, I just, I feel it's, 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 it's. We got to bring it up, Bob. You, mm-hmm. you and I talked no about problem. this. This dude. guy is. Go ahead. Go, I mean, go ahead. My, Mikey tweets is in every single category you have ever seen in your. He, Mikey V, covering a lot of story, covering a lot about of the Murdoch being uh, <laughs> pronounced guilty. That, that was big news. He, he is all. It's, it's. It is all over. And look, here's the deal. All Only power to him. shop. This oh, guy this is in. tweeting. He he's hashtagging <laughs> Arnold Palmer Invitational on the same like day that he's hashtagging the Murdoch doc. It's the craziest. <laughs> the the Murdoch trial. Oh. He's doing Murdoch trial and justice and, speed. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> That was yeah. That was a typo. That was an unfortunate typo. This guy is all. When you're tweeting that much, there's going to be typos. Bob, I, said, I I don't even have Twitter, but I know he's all over the map. All when he tweet when Mikey V tweeted out the Murdoch <laughs> being guilty. I found out the news from Mikey, by the way. I, ah, I found ah. out, and I turned to my dad and I said, "Stay did, informed." Did follow Mikey tweets. Yeah, I I, I turned to my dad. Did Murdoch get uh, pronounced guilty? And my dad goes, "No, it's it's not till later." He was all over. It, Mikey tweets. Has it, it? It is pedal to the goddamn. <laughs> let's metal. let's call a spade a spade, though, Bob. The faithful are 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 really digging into it, though. They're they, real. They, look, they like look, the engagement. Look, the faithful is real. Nobody's debating the fact that the, the faithful voices are, real. are absolutely a thing. I mean, the I voices. Used to say, the voices yeah, are awesome. about it. I I feel like the voices are definitely growing. They're an entity. 
They're an yeah, entity. You know, you know what I will say that that I like um with the Brownly Dumb show followers is like it it's great. Like they they'll bust balls, but like they're still big fans of things. But like it's a lot of like they'll come at us. And that's okay. I think it's great. Like it's yeah. it's all supportive. They all they'll come at me. They'll come at Joe. They'll come at Mike. They come like, at me all the time. I post something. They go and I just see my name tag. And it says add bear down cuz with the eyes or can't wait till oh, oh, I see this. And I'm like, yeah. what are we doing here? It's it it's is. the most. It really is. It's a fun crowd and it's not hostile. It's not malicious. No, it, no. It's no. quality quality comments. Mikey tweets is unlike uh, anything I, that I have ever what, seen. Mikey tweets or or Mikey movies. What's what? Where we stand, Bob? He's all out. It's all Mikey, out. Mikey Mulligans. Mikey yeah, movies. Mikey. It's all, he's I mean, tweeting everything. You talk about a guy who checks all the boxes. I tell you, these people love. Uh, they love the the golf live tweeting though, man, and they love oh, it. And like, yeah. I don't know much about. I mean, like, listen, like I can follow the game, but I don't know the the ins and outs, like gentlemen like yourself. But they really enjoy i've never seen people get so gassed up over a sport like I, even the it's, only thing that engages that high for me is like breaking like bears news and that's only because the majority of my following golf, is a lot of bears people but the golf world is yeah bro it's wild what, man it's fiending for yeah me. yeah that's Mikey, the perfect word that's wait the till you word. wait till you put up your swing like when you go to the driving range and oh, i know yeah, me just i'm waiting on the irons man. Just yeah on the irons. I, I can't wait to see here's the bottom line joe and we're gonna have to accept the reality that i'm telling you whatever he no, puts up no. that original swing it is not going to take long because he is going to be at the driving well, range take it and I i'm taking i'm taking lessons by the way Good that's what I'm saying. He, that's the I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna take lessons. Metal, I don't want to be fall better into than bad us. habits. He's gonna. You be don't want to fall into this Ooh. category. You don't want to fall into the bad habit category. I don't know. You're, you're, you know what you are, Mikey B. You're like in Ghost when they're when they're doing the vase and they're like they're pedaling. You're like a perfect slate, and you can just start molding. I'm like a big mound of clay. And yes. I need to be molded. Yes, you're like Patrick Swayze with the clay right now. You're right. you're perfect, and you want to mold yourself from the. Bob has no idea what you're talking. No. About. <laughs> Speaking of Bobby Blockbusters, that's probably the perfect transition, Bob. Bobby uh, Blockbusters time. Um. Oh God, please, for the love of God! Now, did we get an airplane watch again, Bob? No, you were going to. I actually watched it in the hotel last night okay. when I got in the Jacksonville. Okay, good. Thank God. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, start to finish, I know you guys should give it a try. Gran Torino definitely was concerned in the beginning. There's no question about it. Same thing. I, I, I was definitely concerned about it at the beginning. It really picks up. It's feel good. Wow. Um, it, it, it absolutely checks the box here's what i what i do want to say absolutely check the box i really do like it um it was hard like like when the girl came back and and she had gotten beaten up by that gang and stuff like that that's it, it's hard to watch that i don't like that that part i don't like but it really is such a feel good story the only thing that i do want to say and i know this is probably such a hot take i i do <laughs> Is Clint Eastwood that good? Is he really? I mean, <laughs> is he? Is he that? I, I he, listen. I don't think. I don't think. Like people wig out about Clint Eastwood. I mean, he's a classic American actor, but it's I such mean, a I'm good not story. Like, oh, I gotta watch I it. I think Clint there Eastwood is there is so many other people. I think that could have done. So I mean, and he gets praised for this. And don't get me wrong, he's good. But I don't know. I I I almost think he's the. And again, I like the movie. The movie's a pass for sure. I don't know. There's certain know movies that you have me. to. There's certain movies I just say I'm gonna watch this because X actor is in it. Denzel right. Washington being one of them. Uh, but, Daniel Day Lewis being one of them. Tom Hanks being like. I just am never like, oh my god, Clint Eastwood's in that. I have I to watch. I just didn't it. think it was the best acting from it. Like it didn't. Uh, well, you no, know, he does the. He's supposed to make it seem like. His acting was supposed to be like a guy who it's almost like prototypical kind of old school guy. That that's what he was going for. Get so off my lawn like guy. He was acting to do it, but that's what he was going for, if you but, know what I'm saying. Yeah, no, hundred percent. But don't you think it maybe seemed like a little forced almost in a way? I might be way off on this, but but it's almost like a little um 
I don't know. I just I I know when you guys said Grand Torino, I thought about that because everybody talks about Clint Eastwood in that. I, but that being said, I don't think people are lining up out of the gates to watch Clint Eastwood movies. I know he did that movie, The Mule, which was not that great, which was after, and then he's known for his spaghetti westerns. But like, I don't what's think a, what's are, a spaghetti western? It's something we'll never recommend to you ever, Bob. Okay. Have you ever heard about the movie The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly? No. Nope. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Crazy. I just I don't know if Clint Eastwood's my kind Spaghetti of guy. Westerns when a bunch of cowboys instead of going to the saloon they go to an Italian restaurant and they just order a bunch of you know Italian. Well, that actually that's sounds up my alley. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, well, I, no, I, I thought it was called Spaghetti Westerns because a lot of it was filmed in Italy. And yeah, there, Bob, West- uh, Joe, I'm 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 kidding. Obviously, I was playing oh, yeah, on the spaghetti. Oh, on the spaghetti <laughs> portion. <laughs> <laughs> they actually call it spaghetti westerns bob because a lot of these movies were filmed in italy but they're wild wild west movies and they got they got blanketed into a genre that was mm-hmm. known as spaghetti westerns like quentin Clint tarantino okay. bases a lot of his stuff he's like a major western guy yeah Quentin tarantino that's like that's his that real john house. wayne Look. was another western guy but again i would never recommend any of those movies bob because a, it's not in your wheelhouse. B, it's way older. You, you'd last two minutes. Here's bagels wise for the Bobby Blockbuster. That's Grand what Torino. I'm curious about. Yeah, I it's a weird spot because I don't think I could do point. Like I'd love to do six five because I don't think it's a seven, and I do think it deserves a little bit more than a six. If I could do a six you five, give bagel, a half. you give a half. Give a bagel. six. We have a six five bagel for Grand Torino. Okay. Not a green book. Didn't didn't blow me away, but it was good. I liked it. I felt okay. good after it. With that being said, fellas, what do we got coming in this week? Joseph, do you have anything? Because I I had this movie that that I thought could be because uh, of the feel good thing. I thought, and now maybe Bob has seen it. If he has, which I'm guessing he may have, but okay. Joe, I wanted to get your thoughts on Pursuit of Happiness with Will Smith. Yeah, loved he's it. Seen it. I, uh, I loved it. So. Yeah, that's up okay. my alley. That's a miss. Okay, that's no, a miss. Oh, it's he, there's a lot of movies that people suggest, and they're right up. I, I I wish we had done this segment sooner because I did give Bob a lot of movies prior to ever doing the Bobby blockbusters, and he's watched a bunch of good movies. See, I'm getting there. Uh, I, another one that I was going to suggest, and again, I think he's watched it, is Whiplash. Have you watched Whiplash, Bob? Loved Whiplash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that a lot. Of course he does. where we stand. I think, like, I want to stick with the with the feel-good situation. I've mentioned this movie before, and somehow it got, it got, it got kind of just pushed aside. Seven pounds with Will Smith. I oh, really right. Yeah, you said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've gotten it's, ringing it's, endorsements about that movie on Twitter. It's, also, it's, so. it's Bob. It's up your alley. It's a feel good story. It's great acting. I'm good it's, with that play. It's, it's, you are, I, Mikey. Yeah, I am. Uh-huh. In like 2008 uh-huh. or something. So it's not like very recent, but it's it's good cinematography and the story is fantastic. I think we got to go back, kind of like we did with. You know, Peanut Butter Falcon, whether or not that was a hit or not. But this, oh. I think, I think this will do seven bagels. Okay. I'd yeah, love it. Look, I'd I'm love I'm for that play, Joe. I'm for, I'm for I the seven plus. Seven plus bagel. And by the way, it, as hard as it's been to, to get Bob, I feel like we're starting. We're to, chipping like, away. We're chipping we're away. We're slowly starting to That's find all. that wheelhouse. And, you know, six and a half bagels. Listen, he he gave it the nod of approval. That's we're already, and he's watching it from start to to finish. So we're already. That's doing a win. That. That's yeah. a win. Yep. Okay. We're yeah. We're look. Way, I think we're we are definitely trending in the right direction. It feels good. I'd love another eight or a nine. I I, this, I really this would. Is Will Smith when he was at his best. This is this is in his like in his prime. You know, like I mean, the I Am Legend, he did that. He did The Pursuit of Happiness. It was like right in that whole it, – it's a great movie, Bob. You're going to really like it. Shame to see Will Smith go, man. It, it really is. I mean, this guy, he, really he's – I committed Smith career suicide. Bro. What are you going to do? I don't – I don't Chris think Rock he, special, I didn't watch it. But apparently yeah. for the first 15 he minutes, all at, he talks about is the slap. But I oh, listened to some really? of it. I didn't think any of it was funny, really. I have to tell you the, the Will Smith story with me, Mikey V, of why I always loved him so much. Yeah, he was good to you at the hotel or something, right? Yeah, he was. He was real, I was yeah. a, a doorman at the hotel. I went yeah, yeah. and uh, he was always so nice to me. And then I went to another hotel to go work. And right, right when I went over to that hotel, it was in Miami. And he stayed with us when he was at this hotel prior. 
He was so nice to me. He was one of the classiest guys. I looked up to the guy. The guy was like the way he treated people. He was so good to everybody. Knew us by name. Anyway, went over to the new hotel. My boss was a total prick. Just awful. He was brutal to me. Will Smith was going to come in to check in the new, the new hotel. And I was the right. doorman. And I didn't think that Will Smith was going to recognize me. My boss at the time, the new boss, was a huge Will Smith fan. So he was all giddy about him arriving that day. Long story short, Will Smith comes in. Everybody goes out to greet Will Smith, all the bigwigs. And this guy is the biggest prick to me. And I'm standing there with the welcome juices in my doorman outfit. <laughs> the, uh, the welcome juices and the towels just standing out there. And I'm thinking to myself with how giddy that my new boss is about Will Smith coming in. Imagine if he recognizes me. He gets out of the door. It's like none of those executives and bigwigs were even that's there. Cool. He just yeah, came cool. over and he gave me a big hug it, it, it was and i always loved the guy for it um and then that happened and now he that's is um cool. yeah 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 that's it's a shame cool. to see ladies and gentlemen we interrupt the brilliant dumb show to let you know that the brilliant dumb show is brought to you by our good friends over at better help dot com life doesn't always go the way you want to and it doesn't come with the user manual so when it's not working for you it's normal to feel stuck that's why betterhelp.com is here betterhelp.com matches you with a licensed therapist they have matched over three million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available a hundred percent online plus it's affordable and you don't have to go to a doctor's office or go to some type of building you could do it all from the comfort of your new home of your home you can't go wrong when you go with betterhelp.com learn more and save 10 percent off your first month at betterhelp.com slash bds that's betterhelp h-e-l-p.com slash bds betterhelp.com change your life today for the better our top five here a joey d this is a joey d top five it is a joey top d. five today is brought to you by joey d joey d why don't you tell the folks what we're going to be doing today they were going to be doing top five bread styles um i i thought about this and we have not done this and i do think people are very specific with the bread selection that they like and and i think when you first think about it you think oh there's like one or two different styles of bread and then you start going down the rabbit hole and there's there's a ton of different types of bread that you can add. So I actually think that the lists are going to be pretty wide ranging. So I thought, let's do it. We've never done it before. It's in the food category, which always hits better than anything else. Um, I, I think it's going to be a fun one this week. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's, let's get down into it. I don't mind it at all. Joey D, you want to start us off? Yeah, sure. I'll start us off. Um, at number five this week, I'm going to go with a rye. Um, I, I'm normally more of a, like a, a white or like classic style bread kind of guy. Once in a while, I feel a little bit healthier doing a rye bread. And I do think it's really good for sandwiches, for different things. Um, I, I'm going to throw that at number five, um, just to mix it up. And number four, I'm going to go with the French baguette. Uh, I, I, I love this kind of bread. I think it's always crispy. It hits well. I like to dunk it in olive oil or, or balsamic or have it with butter if you heat it up. I, I think that it's a great bread. Um, French baguette at four. Um, at number three, I'm going to go with a softer style of bread. I'm going to go with a brioche. If you've ever had brioche, you know it's soft, it's delicious, it's warm. To me, a brioche. I was he's describing a woman. <laughs> oh, it's eloquent. It's eloquent. I'm very passionate about Continue. bread. Man. Oh, I know you're passionate. I, I know. fucking love bread, man. And being Italian growing up, it's like bread is like a staple part of the meal. Absolutely. So bread, a brioche at three. This is where it gets hard for me now. At number two, I'm going to go sourdough. I think for me, when I have like, like toast in the morning, if I have a classic sandwich, I think sourdough checks all the boxes, man. I think it's really fucking great. Sourdough's great. great. Uh, I, I, and and now I, I don't know if you guys were aware. Ticket, by the way, used to make his own sourdough during the pandemic. There was like yeah, a yeah. sourdough like craze. Where everybody, yeah, he, had a, he had a weird phase sourdough. with sourdough bread where he, he couldn't stop making. <laughs> so rename him the, bread. rename himself the Big Yeast. <laughs> just put out bread making content on instagram that would be fucking yeah, phenomenal so number two give me a good sourdough and number one for me uh, i i just think that this is is my favorite being an italian guy a good ciabatta bread is so so good 
I got ciabatta at one. I love this. I, I'll make sandwiches out of it. I'll dunk it. I'll, I'll have it like as a toast in the morning with my eggs. My mom will do it. It's crispy. It's good with eggs. I'll do it with, I, I, it's just ciabatta at one. It always was. It always will be. As an Italian guy, ciabatta at one. Mikey V? Stage is yours, big fella. So I, I mean, I got four out of I got four out of five. Joe has. I was worried about this. I do too. Yeah. Really? Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. The I ordering I, is I a lot. I went outside the box. The too. ordering is a lot different, and my number one has not been mentioned. So maybe that's okay. going to turn some heads. But can, number five. Wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. I'm whoa. sorry. Can we do on? Can we do on three the the type of bread that you're talking about? For number one. Well, well, the one that you don't have with Joe, I would like to do on three because I'd be curious if you have it. But let me know when it gets there and we'll count down to three and see if we have the same one. Well, it'll be there when I get to my number one. I just, I just <laughs> oh, it's your number one? It's my number one. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Number five, I'm with Joe on ciabatta. I think ciabatta is a great bed, uh, bread. Number five for me. Number four, I'm with Joe again, but obviously different order, but sourdough. I think sourdough is criminally underrated, especially with the eggs, sunny side up eggs dipped mm -hmm. with sourdough is something really different. <laughs> uh, number three, rye bread, marble rye, rye toast. If I order like a club sandwich at the diner, I am not getting it on white bread. I'm never getting, to be honest, I'm not getting anything on white bread ever. I'm, I always ask for rye toast at the diner. If it's if it's an omelet, any kind of breakfast dish, it's rye bread, rye toast, automatic, automatic. Number two, French baguette. Joe, I agree. Long French French uh, French bread. You, I mean, that's that's a staple everywhere. That bread is is on every single dinner table across America. I would say it's the most. I would I would guess it's the most commonly like bought bakery bread. Uh, and number one for me, oh, Bob, are you ready? We're yeah. not, you're not going to get it, but okay. <laughs> well, well, all right. All right. Let him try. One, one two, three. Kaiser Semolina. roll. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Semolina. Semolina is Italian, ah. is Italian bread, but it's the bread with seeds. It's the seeded Italian oh, bread. Oh, that's fucking good, man. To me, um, Obviously, I was going to go with Italian bread as, as the number one, but semolina in particular, a little different inside. It's not exactly like white bread. It's different. You know what it, it is, right? Yeah, yeah, the yeah, seeded, yeah. seated bread. Like, and this like, seated, I got it. Yeah, yeah, I it's a good one. bro. That's a really, really good one. Yeah, man. Uh, like the end, and the bread. end, the end piece of that bread. Like a lot of people don't like the end. Like the the butt of the bread to me on a good loaf of bread like that is the best part. You put a fresh wet slice of mozzarella on top of a slice yes, of semolina yes, bread yes, yes. and you're if it's done correctly like don't try it if you live in arkansas and you listen to this show don't go out and try and do that because <laughs> your experience won't live up to the hype but when you come out to the east coast and you come see some of us then you have to try a piece of semolina bread with a fresh wet pizza mozzarella on top that will set things off the way they're supposed to be set off. So yeah, semolina number one. Sorry about the Kaiser roll, Bob. Yeah, that's <laughs> sorry. Sorry about the Kaiser roll. That we sucks. That I, one, I I thought it. I thought the that's Kaiser okay. roll. I, I, that's I, okay. It really sucks. When you said he wasn't going to guess it, he just went right outside the box. Yeah, Kaiser roll. Um, <laughs> I um yeah, I was wor I was a little worried about that because I have all very similar. My top fives have been doing terrific, if I don't say so myself. They really have. I've been on a good roll. I mean, we got a call like it is. I, I've been on a good roll with the top fives. Mikey V doing the semolina at, at one is huge, and I didn't have that, so I'm not going to throw that in. Um, give me ciabatta at five. Okay? Yeah. Give me the ciabatta at five. Number four, give me the brioche. I think everything's better with the brioche. Bon, I got brioche at four. Number three, you can go ahead and lock me in for the Kaiser roll at three. <laughs> Give me sourdough at two. Wow. You guys and are high on the sourdough. Yeah. Sourdough's great. Sourdough's great. Don't get I, I I listen, it was my number four. I got a lot of respect for sourdough. Now I just want to make sure we're on the same page here because this is my one. So I want to make sure this is right. I my I put French roll, which to me pretty much is it's a, a French a baguette. Fr yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm just yeah, making absolutely. It, which, which is absolutely. what the sub sandwiches would be on absolutely. for the French roll. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. I just French wanted to baguette. make sure by the way, if you get with cold cuts or cheese, can't go it's wrong. It's so fucking good. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, look, that's how I felt. Do we have honorable mentions? I do. Go ahead, Mikey V. Cornbread is my honorable mention. Cornbread. 
Yeah. Nice piece of cornbread's tough to beat. Sorry. I got I got a one I got a, a different one too is potato bread. Yeah, potato bread's good. I potato bread rolls. Super, potato like, rolls. Potato are, rolls are, are the potato yeah. bread is super soft. It's really nice. Potato roll cheeseburger. Semolina for, oh, yeah. for for that, but you, that's actually you, the potato bun on a hamburger. Oh, a lot oh, of times is better than the brioche bun. Potato rolls, yeah, good it's, stuff. It's up there, man. It's really good. All right. Well, here's the deal, fellas. Yeah, I was a little. Um, Are you honorable mentioning, Bob? Semolina. Oh, Semolina. Semolina. Okay. Give, yeah, give me the good. Semolina for the honorable mention, um, fellas. That does it yet again. Another edition of the Brilliantly Dumb Show. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Get into that five stars. We want to keep the ball rolling. I love you, boys. I appreciate you, boys. That's another edition of the Brilliantly Dumb Show. We will see you next time.